Hello and welcome to this episode of the Hidden Heroes of Tech podcast. Uh, this is the show where we shine a light on the brains behind all the successes we see across industries. It takes more than text to get a product in front of a customer. People from sales go to market, strategy, marketing, finance, operation, and of course, those techs. Uh, we talk with those who we don't know much about and hope to learn some nuggets of wisdom. Our sponsor for this episode today is the revenue.com. I'm Mickey Burra and I'm your host for today. So um, our guest today, before I, um, uh, well, while we're waiting for him, so I'm waiting for him to ring the doorbell to get into the studio. So our desk guest today, let me tell you a little bit about him. His name is Dr. Mark Snukas. So Dr. Mark Snukas, and we're going to call him Mark because that's what he likes to be called. You know, he's a leading strategy advisor helping CEOs and business owners to design and execute winning strategies. He does it in a really smart and fresh way. And I got to know uh, Mark through my social media network and I ended up speaking to him and I was quite refreshed at how he looks at strategy. He does it really more innovatively. And he's developed this thing called the Strategy Launchpad, which he's been working on for some time. And he makes strategy executable. So I've learned a lot about Mark over the last year or so, and I really wanted him to come onto this show and talk to us. And, and today, you know, he's actually, you know, helping small, medium-sized business owners. But in the past, he's worked with companies like Lufthansa, McDonald's, RTL. So he's got quite, you know, a credible background in terms of, you know, what he does. So hopefully, you know, he'll be ringing the doorbell shortly and we'll bring uh, Mark us in. Oh, there he is. Let me see if we can get him into the studio. Hello, Marcus. Welcome to the show. Hi, Vicky. How are you? Awesome. Awesome. So I keep calling you Marcus, and I don't know why. But your actual <laughs> name is Mark. I yeah, mean, it is Mark. Yeah. Yeah. I, with the last name, right? <laughs> yeah, I keep thinking of gladiators. <laughs> Marcus, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so apologies for that. So Mark, you know, oh, um, yeah, I think it's such a, you know, a, a nicer way to call you Mark because anyway Mark so thank you for joining us today I'm excited to have you on the show um so Mark start off by just telling a little bit about more of what I just I was just talking about you and what you did is is there something else you can uh, talk tell us about you that's interesting yeah so I mean you, you mentioned that I work in strategy and uh, I've been doing so for a little over 20 years now and uh, most of that time, actually, as a as somebody who was self-employed. So I started uh, being self-employed right after, right after my university uh, studies. And I yeah, have been self-employed for most of my, my working life, which is, uh, yeah, I haven't met many people who do that, actually, in, in consulting. Specifically. Oh, wow. That's pretty yeah. interesting. So, yes, it's, it's very unusual, that. But you do have a background of working for some of the big names out there, haven't you? Yeah, I, I worked for Deloitte for, uh, for a couple of years. And... Uh, the you know, funny thing was that uh, I mean, having been self-employed all my working life, I was always a little bit curious what it would be like to work for one of the, the big consultancies. And then uh, there was an opportunity in, uh, yeah, a couple of years ago, and then I joined uh, Deloitte uh, in, in one of the European offices uh, as a director. And uh, yeah, it was, was a good experience, but then I, I went back to being self-employed. <laughs> awesome. Well, that sounds like a very illustrious career. Hey, look, before we get into today's topic, I wanted to sort of you know, let the audience know about who you are. So I've got some, you know, questions that sort of will reveal who Mark is. Uh, are you okay if I ask you those questions? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, so it might sound stupid, but what did you have for breakfast today? Uh, breakfast today, um, two slices of bread with hummus and uh, tomato. That's a and bit healthy. <laughs> yeah, trying to trying to eat healthy. Yeah. <laughs> so so so. It's not a usual breakfast. Is that a European breakfast? Because you're not here in the US. You're in Europe somewhere. So I'm where are you in Europe? Where I'm in Europe, you? in Luxembourg, actually. So at home, I'm originally from Luxembourg. Uh, although the, no, the name is more uh, Eastern European, the name actually comes from Lithuania. But uh, I was born and raised in, in Luxembourg. And uh, so I would say bread is kind of usual. The hummus and the tomato, probably not so much. So, yeah, I'm trying to uh, eat more healthy. And uh, that's part of it. <laughs> awesome 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 so that's it is that a typical 
breakfast in Luxembourg, what you had? No, no not in Luxembourg. For, but for me, it's just a, a typical, typical breakfast. Got it. Okay, good. Well, what about this? How are you doing today for real? I mean, are you feeling positive, negative? What, what's your mood? No, I'm actually in a, in a good mood. I like doing these kind of uh, conversations and, and shows. So that's uh, always always fun, uh, uh, fun to do. So you're telling me that coming on this show has made you really happy? Yes, it has. Thank you. Man. Oh my god, <laughs> that's, that's brilliant! You know, so I I'm so honoured. Well, okay, let's continue with these questions. So, um, let me see. Uh, okay, what is your spiciest opinion that most people disagree with? Yeah, okay. well, so I have a little bit of a beef with uh, old school strategic planning, as I call it, and uh, one of the things that. Um, Probably, yeah, the spiciest opinion that a lot of people actually also on social media disagree with is this idea that strategy is not necessary about the long term. You know, it's really uh, lots of people think that, yeah, strategy is always about five years, 10 years, but that's actually not true. So the, the way I think about it is that um, the, the time horizon of your ambition actually defines the time horizon uh, for your strategy. So if your ambition is to enter a new market in the next 12 months or launch a product in the next six months, then that is the time horizon of your strategy. So it doesn't have to do anything with long term or short term for that matter. Um, yeah, don't think about time or strategy as time horizon. Necessary. And lots of people, yeah, they challenge me on that. On that. Oh, issue. so, so, okay. So you've been a bit, you know, generous there in terms of not getting into the spice. So have you got an example of where you really uh, upset somebody and um, you've had a real battle and you've almost come to like punchy punch ups you know yeah, virtual well, punch ups yeah it is, it is about that that kind of thing the other thing that i i remember we had a, a long conversation back and forth on social media actually is that um about the idea of, of emergent strategy and what is what is emergent strategy and what is more deliberate strategy so all right so do you actually get into like arguments over this or just you end up just walking away I try not to. So I sometimes I, I get carried away, and then I, I really want to prove my point or explain it better, if you like. Uh, but then at some point, yeah, you just uh, gotta walk away. I think it was um, I can't recall the guy's name, but uh, it was all about you know you shouldn't do more than uh, three rounds, like in amateur boxing. So you post something, you get an answer, you answer, and then you stop it. So I kind of try to do it i don't succeed always <laughs> so, so are you like the the heavyweight champion of like uh, strategy boxing <laughs> uh, no, <I> would say so. <laughs> <laughs> okay so what superpower do you wish you had and why so i, I remember a colleague I, I used to work with a couple of years ago and uh, she had what i would call a superpower was to uh first of all be really good in kind of seeing and sensing dynamics in a, in a particular situation uh, and then also being able to really call them out and, and describe in, in very detail and in rich language what was actually uh, going on. So I always found that to be a, a superpower that I, uh, I wish I had. Awesome, awesome. And this last question, this really is going to test who you are. I'm going to put this question up on the screen, but this is what it is. And you've been given an elephant you can't give it away or sell it. What would you do with the elephant? Um, probably just put it on my on my shelf somewhere in the back. <laughs> no, you've got to do more with it. Would you turn it into like you know a pie or a pizza or what would you do with it? No, oh. I wouldn't do that. No, so wait, I mean, again, so if it's a real living elephant, elephant, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I would kill it. Uh, that's not what we do. <laughs> <laughs> so would you take it for walks or what would you yeah, do? Probably, with... Yeah, probably take it for walks. So we just live, uh, there's a, um, a forest just behind us. So yeah, right. now I go uh, I go walk the dog. So maybe I can take the elephant as well. <laughs> yeah, you can take the forest down with an elephant, can't you? <laughs> awesome. Well, that was really interesting. Thank you for sharing some of those things. Sure, well, sure. moving on to the, the, the topic of today's show. Um it's called strategic strategic living, harnessing the power of strategy in every slice of life. And, you know, it was interesting when we talked about this topic, because normally we think about strategy as something we do in work. But you brought this idea that strategy is more than just work. So maybe you can expand on that a little bit for the audience. What what does that mean in terms of living strategy every day? Right. So I think one of the one of the biggest challenges we have uh, in organizations when it comes to talking about strategy is that 
everybody has uh, his or her own definition of, of what strategy is. And obviously that's making things complicated because you always have to align on what are we actually talking about. It's actually something I do in my work when I, when I start working with a company and an executive team. The first thing we always do is align on what do we mean by strategy. And so to really have a good definition of strategy, I and, and others as well think that we need to have a, a, a definition that actually works everywhere. So in all kind of walks of life, in business, in politics, in economics, in military, but also in your personal life. So the way I, and again, others think about strategy is that strategy is really about how are you solving the, the problems you face and how are you seizing the opportunities that help you to reach your ambitions. So there is this notion of you need to get from A to B. If, I mean, you're talking about what is the plan. If there is no challenge, you don't need a strategy. You can just have a plan. Here is the things we're going to do to move from A to B. If there is a challenge, we need a strategy. And that's why I say that strategy, this definition of strategy actually works just as well in business as in your personal life, because you want to achieve something. There are challenges to getting there. Maybe you don't have the, the means or you don't have the, the access to something. There are some kind of constraints, some kind of bottleneck, some have called it, that you need to bust. And strategy is just a way of how to do that. So let me just expand on that a little bit. So. Uh, I think I'm still not clear what strategy is, but let me just repeat what I think I heard. The everyday mechanisms we use in business, you're saying essentially we can use them and we do use them in our everyday lives, but maybe we don't know we're doing it or we don't do it intentionally. Would that be right? Well, I think I would say that. So if we define strategy as the, the response to the challenges that keep you from reaching your ambitions, that definition works wherever you are. And oh, you are, right? let me, so let, let me, yeah. So let me just hold you on that point. You said is strategy sorry, that stops you from is the response or yeah. is the answer to the challenges that keep you from reaching your ambitions. So you have a goal, you are somewhere, something is making it difficult to reach that goal. And strategy is how you overcome that challenge, how you bust, bust the bottleneck, some have called it, on your way to reaching your ambitions or your vision, you might call it. So what would be an example outside of business you could think of that we could relate to? Well, we, I mean, we spoke about healthy, healthy living. Uh, so you might say, well, I want to I lose weight. I want to get more healthy. Uh, I don't have the time to cook every day or I don't have the time to go to the gym every day. So what is my strategy for still uh, achieving my objectives, right? And, and the difference, as you as you mentioned earlier, the difference with a plan, the plan would just be, okay, well, I do exercise X amount of time or I do uh, eat X amount of, of calories, but then uh, what is making that difficult and that's where you need the strategy. Okay, so let's just hang, anchor on that um, exercise thing. So a plan is I'm going to go and do 30 minutes of exercise every day. Right. So what's the strategy part of that? Isn't well, that the strategy? Well, the strategy part would be what is making that difficult. So maybe you have a plan to go to the gym every day, but for some reason you only manage to go twice or three times a week. And then okay. how are we going to deal with that challenge? Well, that's where the strategy comes oh, in. Okay. So maybe a simple strategy could be I need to do it at 6 a.m. in the morning before I go to work first thing. So it, I'm sure it has been done. So that could be the strategy. Got it. Well, well. Got it. So that's interesting because, you know, many people on the on the New Year put forward a New Year's resolution, don't they? And they say, I'm going to do lose weight this year or I'm going to exercise. Or I'm going to do this. That's a plan. Yeah, no wish thinking, right? So, And it only becomes a strategy the moment you acknowledge what is going to make this difficult and what am I going to do about that. So. This is interesting. So if you're if you're listening and you're doing, um, you know, a, a New Year's resolution, and I, I do it every year, I'm going to become slim, and I never make it um, because you do it one time because you tend to start a plan like I'm going to lose weight and I'm going to go on a diet tomorrow, and tomorrow I've got the day off because the day after New Year's, but then work <laughs> kicks in, and I say I can't do it anymore. So I guess the strategy from what you said is to say okay, I'm going to lose weight this year, but how am I going to do that? Because when I go back to work, I haven't got the time. Um, 
So I then put out, like you said, I am going to set aside a time where I don't have to work, a time where I don't have to be with the family, 6.30 in the morning, 30 minutes a day, I'm going to do exercise. Um, but how does that go a little bit further than just, you know, I guess um, stuff like uh, mechanical stuff that we just talked about? What about mental thinking? How can strategy help you in your mental and thinking goals? Can it help you, you know, overcome some of those? Just asking, I don't know the answer to that question. Well, I haven't, yeah, it's a good question. I really haven't thought about it. But again, I would, I would, in terms of thinking and, and mental, it's the same, same kind of idea. So what do you try to achieve? What is making that difficult? And then what is your strategy to overcome these, um, these challenges? Yeah. Okay. That's an interesting one. I, I just came up uh, 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 on top of mind as we were talking about that. Um, so what about um, other aspects of our lives? I mean, I think if the audience is listening to this, they're probably surprised that we're talking about strategy in our everyday life. Mm -hmm. But let's take something simple. Um, we're going to have a dinner party and we're going to invite some friends around. And I'm yeah. going to ask you to actually build a strategy for that. And I want to do it on Saturday night at 6.30 p.m. What would you do if you were building a strategy to achieve that success? Well, so again, the question is, do you need a strategy for that or just a plan? Right? So oh, is it enough? Is it enough to just plan, okay, well, here is the, the, the food we're going to have and here is how we're going to prepare it or how, where we're we going to order it and uh, here is how we're going to set up the drinks and all of that. Well, maybe it doesn't need a strategy. It just needs a plan. Right? If now you say, well, I want to have a party and I know that my friends, they don't like coming over for whatever reason, that might need a strategy to make it more interesting for them to kind of uh, yeah, actually come over and, and join your party. Right? So what you're saying, um, we don't always need a strategy. Right. And I think that, again, in, in personal life and also in especially in business, we call a lot of things strategy that are, first of all, are not really strategies. And second of all, you might not need a strategy because a plan actually will do, right? So, I mean, nobody, if you, so, you know, this idea of we, we, need, a, we need a plan uh, if something takes a, a long time and a plan or we need a strategy to get from A to B. Now, if you want to build a house, well, I mean, A is there is no house, B is I want to have a house. Nobody would call that a strategy. Right? It's just a plan. You know what you're doing, well, you're building the house and well, there's lots of details. It's, it can be very complex, but nobody would really call that a, a strategy. So I don't really understand why in business, if we say we want to get from A to B, why we would need to call that always a strategy. And again, if there is no challenge, you don't need a strategy. Your plan will do. Oh, it's interesting. So I'm trying to come back to the original, you know, the topic of today's show, which is strategic living, harnessing the power of strategy in every slice of life. So there are times when you, what you're saying, there's a times when strategy is relevant and there's a time when it's not relevant. And if we recognize that, then what's the benefit and not the benefit you know so expand on that for a little bit the benefit of having a strategy or not having a strategy oh recognizing whether we do or don't need to have a strategy yeah i think it's simply not over complicating things right i mean <laughs> if you really uh, again you don't need you don't always need a strategy so don't over complicate things on the other hand if you want to do something like I mean, let's stay with the example of losing weight and for whatever reason your plan doesn't work, then it might be worth to think about, right, apply this strategic thinking and, and uh, reflect upon, okay, so why is it not working? Why is my plan not working? What are the challenges? What is the bottleneck here? And how can I you know, work around that? Or what is my, my solution to it? And so whenever in, in personal life, when I face a challenge and you know, I'm, I'm not reaching my objectives, although I have all these good plans and I have the to-do lists and everything, I, uh, then I sit down and I, I reflect upon, okay, so what are the top challenges here? What are the big problems, the barriers that keep me from, from doing this? And, and what is the solution? Uh, and maybe solution is, yeah, I need to do something. Maybe solution is to hire somebody uh, to do something. I think it was right. Mark Goldsmith, for example, who said that um, he has a couple of, do you know the, the, the famous uh, executive coach, Mark, uh, uh, Mark Marshall Goldsmith, yeah. So he has a... Uh, he has a list of everyday questions that he likes to go through. And he's very bad at doing that, actually. So his strategy was he pays somebody to call him 
uh, at a specific time every day, and then they go through these reflection questions together. So that's his way of making sure that, um, yeah, the, he does that work. But it required apparently a strategy, so hiring somebody to call him just to go through these questions because on his own, he wouldn't do it. And that's a bit like... Um, when I when I was at um, university, I would say to my mom, "Can you call me every morning to wake me up?" Right. <laughs> I can't yeah, wake your, your strategy for getting out of bed in the morning, right? Yeah, is to get <laughs> my mom to call me. Right? <laughs> so, when should you create a strategy? Yeah. yeah, but again, I mean, always when you when you face a challenge and you you have something that's very important that you want to achieve and uh, you're facing a challenge, on, uh, so that's one part. The other part is. And I guess that's also, I mean, again, as somebody who is who is self-employed, very important. You know, um, it's about having clarity and focus of, of what you want to do and where you want to go. You know, also if you so if you, for example, in a in your personal life, you complain about having too many priorities, not having too much or not having enough time uh, to do the stuff that is important to you. I think that's worth doing some strategy strategy work because it's going to help you to be clear about so what are your goals what is important to you what are the ambitions you have again what is making it difficult to reach those and then what can you do about it so yeah, clarity um and focus are going to to actually help you then um, overcome lots of these yeah doubts i would say and the, the confusion about maybe what to do with your life or how to spend your time or yeah, just being overwhelmed and and uh, yeah, overwhelmed by all the priorities and all the, the things that you need to do. Okay, well, that's interesting. So are there any simple steps you could sort of share with the audience? You know, somebody who's trying to, you know, solve a problem at home or outside of work, um, what simple two, three or four steps um, could you advise the audience to follow to build a strategy who doesn't, you know, somebody who doesn't know what to do, to how to start? Well, so first step is be clear about... What, what, what is your priority? What is your vision? What is your goal? What is your, your ambition? What do you want to achieve? Step number two is acknowledge what is uh, making that difficult. And uh, the New Year's resolutions is a good example of, you know, you, you need to be honest to yourself and, then, uh, and really face the challenges. Uh, don't go into too much or don't fall for wishful thinking, but really acknowledge the challenges. Acknowledge what is making what is going to make this difficult? Don't just say, well, this year is going to be different than last year's. No, but what is specifically making it difficult? So that's number two, acknowledge the challenge. And then number three, uh, you probably want to brainstorm on uh, solutions. What could help you, like, you know, uh, engage your mother in this whole process of helping you to, uh, uh, to be more healthy, for example, or engage your, your spouse, uh, throw out all the, the bad food or the junk food from home if you want to, from your, from your kitchen, right? Uh, and then, yeah, once you have brainstormed all of these things, just pick three and, and uh, start with those. That's awesome. So th really good three steps. So I wrote down, have a vision, identify your blockers, and brainstorm solutions. Will those right. be the three things? Yeah. Okay, that's really great. Thanks. I'm going to put that up in the in the notes below so anybody's readings don't forget. Okay, well, that's interesting. So let's sort of ask you this question. You know, and I'm, I'm trying to understand how to phrase this, but if you're working somewhere and you don't understand strategy, and then now you learning from you, we can now implement strategy in our everyday lives. How can we bring that thinking into work? Well, in work, it's exactly the same approach, right? So at work, again, so it's not just about coming up with a plan, uh, but it is about thinking, okay, again, what are our ambitions? What do we want to achieve? What is making it difficult? And just like in real life, in business, you have many constraints. You might, you don't, maybe you don't have the resources, maybe you don't have the budget, uh, maybe you don't have all the time and the work in the world to do it. So, what are the constraints? What is making it difficult? And then you come up with uh, the the action plan, or do you come up with a rule, and then the actions on on how you're going to uh, bust that bottleneck on your way to uh, achieving your ambitions. So let me just then, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Well, and then I was about to say, so in in business, there is a set of, or in business strategy, there is a set of generic issues and challenges that every strategy needs to solve, right? So if you're thinking about business strategy, you should have an idea of 
who is our ideal customer, what are we offering them, um, what steps in the value chain do we actually focus on, what are the challenge, the channels we use to get to our customers, how are we going to compete, well, so what is our value proposition really, how are we going to differentiate, how are we going to make money. So that's kind of like generic strategic challenges that every business uh, needs to solve. Right? And here it's very important to be aware that are we talking about corporate level strategy because then the, the, the questions and the issues are different ones than if you're talking about business level strategy or if you're talking about functional level strategy. So, you know, some of my audience, um, it's no great secret I work for AWS and there's a lot of my audience work for Google and some of these big, the fan companies. And, right. you know, diversity, inclusion, equality is a big thing in these organizations. And and as people think about themselves and how they navigate inside a company, you know, how can we use strategy for our own personal self inside the workplace? Have you any thoughts on that? Yeah. So again, I mean, if you if you're thinking about you want to advance, you want to have a new job, or you want to advance in your career, again, strategy is the same thinking. Right? So I keep on repeating myself here, but it's really not that uh, it's not rocket science. So again, it's about what do you what do I want to achieve? what is making it difficult or what are also the opportunities that I see that could help me achieve that and then uh, formulate the strategy. Let, let, me, let, let me just uh, put some color to that then. <clears throat> so if I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sales rep, I'm a, a, a early career sales rep and I'm looking for my next promotion and um, should I think about using a strategy to get my next promotion or do I just plan something? So first, I guess the first question is I'm uh, trying to get a promotion do I need a strategy for that, or should I just go and ask? I would, uh, well, if it's that easy, then maybe just go and ask, right? But if it's more complicated, then you might need to think about how you uh, how you go there. Right? So just the other day, I had a coaching session with a, a head of a business development team, uh, and so we talked about how could the, that team actually improve their sales and what could be the strategy for that, right? So we came, we talked about. Uh, how to find opportunities, what are the challenges that they as a team currently face to increase their conversion rates and what they could do about it. So it's a, a mini strategy, if you like, just for a uh, business development team. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Well, let me just switch it a little bit towards business now. Um, I, I had this um, conversation the other day with somebody internally at my own company. And, um, you know, it was confusing because we were talking about different functions of different jobs. You know, we have a strategy team, we have a go to market team, you know, and I was just thinking, is there a way, um, first of all, is there a difference between a strategy team and a go to market team and something called corporate and business strategy? Can you maybe give us a few thoughts on that? Yeah. So there is definitely a, a difference. So corporate and business strategy, for example, so the, the key questions you have to answer on the corporate level are basically which businesses do we want to be in and how do we want to manage these businesses? So in other words, are we looking for more of a, um, a, pot a diversified portfolio of companies from a corporate perspective or are we looking at a uh, integrated uh, portfolio of companies so that we can have synergies between these different businesses? So just the other day, for example, there was a, um, a news article uh, um, on BYD going into shipping. Uh, so BYD, the, the, uh, the Chinese uh, electric vehicle producer. Okay. And so, and then there was a, so they are going into shipping. So they bought these huge container ships. And there was a discussion actually around whether it is a good idea to diversify like that. And somebody brought up GE as, as a bad example of how diversification can go wrong. But so this is the corporate strategy discussion, right? And I think for BYD, it makes perfect sense because of the difference between GE and, uh, and BYD is GE was a diversified portfolio of companies. So they were in healthcare, they were in aviation, they were in appliances. All these businesses didn't really have anything to do with each other. Right? So that's uh, a corporate strategy decision. On the other hand, BYD is really building a portfolio of integrated companies because every company they own, it's one part of their supply chain and one part of their value chain. So they go from mining up to now having these container ships and they actually said that they're not buying the container ships to go into the container shipping market, 
but it's about transporting their products mm. to from China to Europe and the and the US. Right? But that's a, a corporate level. So that's corporate strategy. Business level strategy is then for those businesses that we have decided to be in. How do we compete in these right. businesses? And that comes with a different set of questions. Would that would that be like go to market then the business strategy? Well, that, that, that's probably part. That's part of it. Yeah. So I would okay. say on the on the overall high level, it's about so who is the who is the customer for our business right. what are we offering? How are we going to compete? And then further down, even one level down on a, on a functional level, go to market. So what does that mean for our go to market strategy? So here we have. Um, and this is a good example also how these different levels of strategy need to be aligned to each other. You know, if you say our overall strategy is to go for customer ABC, but our go-to-market focuses on DEF, then it's not going to work. Right? right. That's interesting. So in your experience, because you've been around a long time, is that are there any companies that you think get it right? And why do they get it right? Yeah, so I mean, my my clients get right. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, because they've got you. But you know, why not? So, oh, well, um, it's, I mean, obviously, from the outside, if you look at companies, um, if, if they are successful, you would assume that they um, they get it right. Uh, that it's always difficult to say how they really approach it uh, internally. It's also interesting that you know, large companies at some point they. Kind of seem to get it right uh, somehow by default. So the question is really, and uh, and also in the in the literature or the academic research, for example, questions whether uh, well, what the the impact of a strategy is on the performance of a large company, uh, because it's just so there is a routine for how things work that is hard to disrupt. So as long as things actually go well, uh, you might not really need to uh, to work on your strategy a lot. Uh, on the other hand. Small and medium companies, the, the 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 impact a good strategy can have on performance is actually much bigger. At least that's what the what the research has shown. Interesting. So earlier you mentioned uh, Marshall Goldsmith. I'm a fan of Marshall Goldsmith. You know, he shares a lot of wisdom. But are there any other um, people that you admire that pe you know the audience could you know look up and learn from? Well, so, I mean, in, in the field of strategy, the the ones that I have learned most from are so there was Roger Martin, obviously, who was pretty pretty famous. I had, um, there was Costas Marquitas from as a professor at London Business School. So actually, one of my my early books, and I still got it here. So this is like twenty five years old, and I I still have it right next to me here. So this is one of the yeah, one of, a good book on strategy by Costas Marquitas. Um, another guy I learned a lot from is a, a Dutch professor. He wrote a book called Strategy. And they actually, he, he kind of really formed my or influenced my thinking about strategy quite a lot because in the book he took a an approach, uh, they call it an issue-based approach. So really focusing on what are the big questions you need to answer in strategy. And then they present the theory uh, around how could you approach answering that question. Instead of what most strategy books actually do is they present you with here are tools that you can use. right mm -hmm. And this one focuses more on the uh, on the questions you need to ask yourself. So I think that is really helping a lot in coming up with good strategies if you are clear on what are the, the key questions we need to ask. And then uh, finding answers is still a different thing. So will you be able to share the book list and we'll put it in the bottom of the uh, the, the comments section? Yeah, in, sure. yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, great. So uh, audience, um, you know, we will have the book list below, so don't worry about writing it down. Um, so another interesting question. Um, what is one idea that experts in your field say, like, say that you disagree with? Well, I mentioned already the, the long-term planning uh, at the beginning, right? And there are uh, lots of uh, experts or uh, professors. Uh, just I had another book somewhere here, uh, Exploring Strategies, called where they, they define strategy about the long-term development of your organization. And then in the rest of the text, they don't really talk about that too much, but that is clearly one of the things I'm so we don't we don't want that in the book list then. <laughs> no. No, I, the rest of the thing, I mean, it presents the classic tools and approaches there, but this idea, it's not wrong, but it doesn't have to. It's not a defining thing when it comes to uh, strategy. So, so just to summarize, what are you specifically disagreeing with in that point? You know, is it? Well, strategy always has to be about the long term. You know, if you right. again, so it is maybe a, a definition of of strategy in business. Uh, 
but it doesn't really have that's not the defining thing of strategy like actually another another good book it's um by a guy called peter compo so i like peter also in terms of admire uh he has had a very long uh, career at dupont uh, and, and he kind of and, and he developed all this strategy thinking while being at, at uh, dupont and he says we are kind of misled by this idea that strategy has to be long term because strategic stuff is usually the important things right? and it takes a long time to make changes when it comes to implementing uh, strategies and that's why we are misled to think that uh, strategy is long term but uh, i mean if you really think about it no ceo wants a change to take a long time right they would rather mm -hmm. have it tomorrow than having to work on it for five years to to get there right? so it's really just more the the nature of the challenges that we work with that might make it um, long term, right? But I mean, we talked about go to market. You know, if your go to market currently is not working, um, having a strategy for the next five years is not going to help. But you need a strategy how to make the go to market work next month. Right? Yeah, got it. Awesome. Well, let me just switch gears a little bit. Um, I've been very insightful, by the way, up to now. So, what's the favorite part of your job? Well, I, I just like helping people. Right? So, it's really this idea of, yeah, so helping somebody solve their challenges. You know, I, it's, uh, um, you know, when, when I started as working as a consultant, family always asked me, so what, what is it that you actually do? Right? It's, it's kind of difficult. It was always difficult to explain what does a consultant do. And even now, after having done it for 20 years, I still have people in the family who ask me, Mark, what is it that you actually do? Right? And so the way I always explain it is really that it's about helping people or companies then leaders solve the the challenges they they have and they face right so that's the 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 part of my job that i like um i also like the the let's say the educational or the teaching aspect of it so it's really i'm not the you know the the done for you strategy consultant where you tell me mark i need a strategy and then i develop it no i'm really more about helping you to develop your strategy so i i show you how it works i take you through the through the steps i take you through the process i give you the tools and the methodologies and show you how to apply them so these are yeah, the the two things okay. that i like about, not about my job so i'm going to ask you the next question and i'm hoping it's not a strategy book but which is your <laughs> which is your strategy which is your favorite book <laughs> but if it is a strategy book that's okay well so we talked about uh we talked about uh, the strategy books um uh, gee, I can't remember the name. Yeah, that was something. Uh, I, I mean, in general, I like reading biographies. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just reading right now the um, Obama. Uh -huh. So I, that's uh, yeah, I like that. Just yeah, these stories. You're interested in, you're interested in people, yeah. Yeah, the 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 very first one actually I I remember reading was uh, about Tom Peters, so a famous consultant. <laughs> so maybe that influenced me to go into consulting. But uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, I. I, I like so it sounds, like, sounds like you like reading about people and what got them to where yeah, they are. Yeah. yeah Interesting. About people, yeah. Okay. So what's your favorite movie? Oh, sure. Um, a, a movie that I probably saw like 20 times is um, any, Every Given Sunday um, with El Pacino. It's about uh, American football. Oh. And I was just, uh, I, I remember seeing it uh, it's 20, 20 years ago. I remember seeing it in, in a movie theater and it was just uh, so impressive, the, the visuals that they did at the time and, uh, you know, in, in the big movie theater. And so, I, yeah, I must have seen that like 20 times uh, at the awesome. time. Well, okay. Um, here's another one. So if someone was going to take you to dinner, what's your favorite meal? Uh, I like food in general, so it's really, and there isn't much that I wouldn't eat. Um, but the first thing that came to mind now when he said, take you to dinner, I was thinking about Japanese, or I was thinking about Zuma, Zuma or Nobu, something like that. Okay, okay. You're into those types of foods, the Eastern delights. Um, okay, um, as we come to the end of this um, uh, show, wh where can people go to learn more about you? And we'll put the details in, but maybe you can tell us a right. bit more how they can learn. Right, so the, the first thing is probably to go to my website. So it's uh, snookas.com, S-N-I-U-K-A-S.com. So yeah. that's a, a good starting point. Or search me on, on LinkedIn. So if you search Mark Snookas on LinkedIn, you're also going to find me there. 
and uh, I share yeah, everyday thoughts and, and tips and, and actionable insights on strategy there. So, okay, so we'll have those links below as well. So, um, so what can people expect from you next? I mean, I know you have this thing called the Strategy Launchpad, mm -hmm. um, which people can learn about if they go to your website. Um, right. But what are you working on the next big thing? Well, so uh, two things actually. So the one is I'm uh, working on a new guide called the Better Strategy OS. Okay. Uh, which is going to be available for free for download once it's there. So that's one thing. And the other thing I'm working on is a strategy launchpad program actually, where I could take more people at the same time through it. You know, currently my work is very much one on one, or I work with one company. And the idea I have for this strategy launchpad program is actually to have an online program where you have a bit of being taken through the steps of developing your strategy and then plus some uh, coaching from from myself to actually help you make sure that you have a high quality good strategy oh, yeah that's things I'm working on. oh really amazing I'm looking forward to seeing that pop out in the social media posts oh, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll invite you as an early Tester. <laughs> a beta tester. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Um, so how can listeners support you in your work? Well, so uh, LinkedIn, uh, if you uh, share share my stuff, like my stuff, uh, that's probably very helpful. And then I'm also always looking for, for feedback, really. And so uh, a lot of the stuff that I put out there, I mean, obviously, it comes from uh, from my work, uh, the work that I do with, with companies and executives, and then there's also just things there that uh, thoughts and ideas I have that I put out, and it's always good to get uh, get into a conversation and get feedback. Awesome. And then um, one final question for you. Uh, well, two. I've got two more questions just to close off. Um, is there anything we haven't covered that you'd like to say before we close out? No, I think it's good. That was a, a nice, uh, a nice conversation, Mickey. Thank you for that. Uh, nothing okay. that I, I can think of that I would have. Okay, and then. A final thought for the listener, some snippets of wisdom, because I know you're full of them. <laughs> well, so keep it simple. Right? So very often strategy, uh, we think it has to be complex or complicated, uh, long documents, and a good strategy is just one sentence. So try to keep it simple. All right. Well, I want to say thank you for joining me today. Um, I really appreciate um you know, you actually um, joining the show. It's been very insightful. I think, you know, we've been very lucky to have you on the show. So, you know, definitely, definitely thank you. Thank you. Um, and with that, I'm going to um, say to the audience, um, thank you. Thank you to our guest, Mark, Mark Snukas, who actually joined us today and took some time out of his day from Luxembourg. It's been a true pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the show today. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the reminders to the hidden heroes of tech on YouTube or, you know, where you'll get the full, full episode um, and, and listen to what Marcus has talked about today. Um, you can also get this uh, uh, episode of the show on your favorite podcast platform, Apple, Spotify, etc. So, you know, with that, um, I'd like to say to everybody, thank you very much. And I will speak to you next time and look forward to the next episode.